Prince Rupert is a coastal port city, nestled into a mountain surrounded by the Great Bear Rainforest. Just a boat ride away, you can spot grizzly bears, wolves, orcas, and humpbacks. The nearby Skeena River and area is famous for fishing, kayaking, and hiking. Prince Rupert's ice-free harbor serves the lumber, mining, and agricultural areas of northern British Columbia. After the Second World War, fishing, particularly for salmon and halibut, and forestry became the main industries. Prince Rupert was considered the halibut capital of the world. Prince Rupert has a solid economic base of transport and logistics, tourism and resource sectors, as well as a consumer base for small business. Prince Rupert is known as the City of Rainbows. It is Canada's wettest city with an annual average of 620 millimeters or 103 inches of precipitation. Each year, at least 240 days receive some measurable precipitation. The city's founder, Charles Melville Hayes, was the general manager of the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway. He envisioned Prince Rupert as the western terminus of the transcontinental railroad and a world famous port. Prince Rupert is the terminus for ferry traffic to southeastern Alaska, Haida Gwaii, and Vancouver Island. It has one of the world's deepest natural ice free harbors. Its 15,000 inhabitants enjoy a marine climate with summer temperatures in the low 20 degrees Celsius. Winter temperatures are between 0 and 10. Prince Rupert is in the heart of Simshian territory. For 10,000 years, many villages flourished here. European explorers first arrived off the northern coast in the 18th century. They began a maritime fur trade with the Simshian and the neighboring Nishka, Haida, and Haltsuk nations. It was August 1961 before Prince Rupert had its first airport. It was built by the federal government on Digby Island on the west side of the harbor. But the presence of aviation goes back to 1921. The Prince Rupert Daily News announced the arrival of the first aircraft. It did not arrive by air. It arrived on a railroad flat car. Clarence O. Prest of Las Vegas set out from Nevada in his war surplus trainer, a Curtis JN4 Jenny. Prest was attempting to fly from Mexico to Siberia. His aircraft, named the Polar Bear, entered Canada in early August 1921. He barnstormed his way north. By the latter part of August 1921, Prest was in Hazleton, but had an engine failure on takeoff. He was forced to land in a field next to the Skeeter River. He shipped his repaired polar bear to Prince Rupert by rail on September 1st. The city fathers prevailed upon Prest to delay his departure to Wrangell, Alaska, so he could partake in the city's agricultural and industrial exhibition about two weeks later on Acropolis Hill, now known as Roosevelt Park. A tennis court and playing field were linked for the event with a planked bridge across a small gully. This proved to be sufficient for press to take off, but the polar bear had no brakes. A local pioneer, George Frizzell, came up with a solution. String a sane net across the field to stop the jenny if need be. The promoters and spectators were thrilled as a series of flights were successfully completed for two days. But on the last flight of the second day, Prest ran into the net and into rocks at the end of the field 
breaking the propeller and damaging a wing. Before Prest could complete his series of flights, he was arrested and jailed for participating in gainful activities, referring to his barnstorming and giving joy rides in a number of British Columbia and Alberta towns. Prince Rupert's city fathers intervened and Prest was released from jail. Prest ordered a new propeller from Seattle. It arrived by steamship. On September 22nd, Prest left for Wrangell, but poor weather forced a return. Four days later, a storm hit. During the night, the polar bear broke loose from its tie downs and was badly damaged. Prest canceled his plans and left for the south via steamship. The second aircraft to arrive in Prince Rupert was a flying boat. Lieutenant Roy Jones had been a pilot with the United States Air Service during the First World War. After discharge, Jones bought the hull of a Curtis MF Seagull from the United States Navy. He also bought a 180 horsepower engine from the United States Army. These were shipped to Seattle's Lake Union. With help from Bill Boeing and Eddie Hubbard Jones, the flying boat was assembled. It was subsequently registered in Canada as N. ABCS. Before the First World War, Jones had worked for Standard Oil in Alaska. His intention was to start an airline in southeastern Alaska. Jones named his aircraft the North Bird. In early July 1922, Jones and his mechanic, Jerry Smith, left Seattle bound for Ketchikan. They made fuel stops along the way, arriving in Prince Rupert in mid-July. After clearing customs, they left for Alaska. Another aircraft visited in the early summer of 1922. The German-built Junkers Larsen JL-6, known as Vic. The aircraft was owned by the Railway Employees Investment and Industrial Association Limited operated from Hazleton for prospecting and exploration, Vic was flown by Major George Thompson, who was known as Tommy. Prince Rupert had been selected as a sub-base for the Jericho Beach Air Station to enable the station's aircraft to provide air transport to the Department of Fisheries and make aerial inspections of the area. The first Canadian aircraft to fly up the coast was a Curtis HS-2L. It left Jericho Beach early on July 23, 1923, making stops at Alert Bay and Bella Bella, arriving at Prince Rupert late that afternoon. The flying boat was flown by squadron leader Earl Godfrey with Harold Davenport as crewman. Godfrey was met by Lieutenant Earl McLeod, who wasted no time in setting up a base of operations at Seal Cove, adjacent to downtown. His selection of Seal Cove proved to be a far-sighted decision. The cove was used continuously, first by the Air Force and later by commercial operations. It is still in use. McLeod made his first flight around Haida Gwaii, then known as the Queen Charlotte Islands, from Seal Cove in late August 1923. After the success of the New York to Nome flight of 1920, General William Mitchell, Assistant Chief of the United States Air Service, believed a world flight would attract public recognition and congressional funding for his struggling air service. The aircraft chosen were five Douglas DWC World Cruisers. Four of the aircraft would take part. One would be held in reserve. The DWCs were two-seaters 
powered by a 450 horsepower Liberty engine. The event would start at Seattle. The aircraft would be equipped with floats at the Sand Point Naval Air Station after being delivered from Santa Monica, California. The four aircraft took off on April 6, 1924. They flew for six hours and 10 minutes, nonstop, for 650 miles to Prince Rupert. While flying up the inside passage in poor weather, two came close to colliding with a coastal steamer. All but one arrived safely. Its float struts were damaged, landing in a snowstorm at Prince Rupert. Prince Rupert workmen fabricated new Sitka spruce struts, milled locally. Pilots and crew were hosted with a civic banquet. The four DWCs left on April 10th. Their itinerary, Sitka, the Aleutian Islands, Japan, India, Hungary, London, Iceland. They arrived back at the Sandpoint Naval Air Station in Seattle after a flight of 175 days and 27,553 miles.